Well, first up today, we're going to have another crack at our HVAC vents in the middle of the dashboard here. So we've got a new Bowden. The old one, unfortunately, it didn't have enough throw in it. It couldn't actually do the range of motion that we needed. And also the rod inside of it was too stiff. I think it was like a solid um, steel rod all the way through. So it, as it was trying to bend around the corners, you're basically taking a straight piece of steel and bending it you know, a, a straight piece would go into the corner and have to bend, and it was really, really difficult to move it through. And that was fine for us, like, rolling the uh, rolling the adjuster. It wasn't a problem for us in terms of the force we could apply, but the plastic adjuster in here, so it's like a little set of gears and everything that go through, and move that little plastic adjuster, and that was actually bending quite badly uh, with the load that was being put on it. So this new Bowden is a lot more flexible. It's a bit longer, so we can run it on a more sensible path, and it's a lot, lot happier. If I actually hold the end like hold this little metal boss here and i run it through its uh, run it through its movement not that it's easy to tell from there but it does actually run the thing all the way through its range of motion on the heater end so that's all quite happy the different attachment on it does mean that we've got to figure out a new way to mount it so the current plan is where we've got these two 3d printed vent adapters we're going to turn this all into one big 3d printed piece with a receiver in it that this metal kind of threaded end fits into i'm not sure if we're going to thread it in or if we're just going to like drop it into a slot but one way or another that should be held together and printed up by the end of today if we're really lucky at least so next up, moving down the dashboard a little bit, we've got this new panel here, which is our hazard switch and our fan speed selector. So the hazard switch was a little bit tricky. There's quite a few dimensions here because this is the OEM piece and it's not really designed to be retrofitted. But AIDS designed a little pocket here that it fits into really quite nicely. It's a good firm snap to get it in place and then it's held in good and hard so you can, you know, in a panic, you can like properly mash the button and everything stays together, which is awesome. The fan selector isn't quite perfect. We have to put a bigger pocket on the back of it to push the connector slightly further, sorry, push the adjuster slightly further out so that the knob will fit on the front, but it's mostly good. And we've got to make a few other adjustments as well. This edge here, where it overhangs outside the pocket and the bottom edge, both have to come off because they're interfering with the foam. And we've also got to shrink the, uh, shrink the uh, kind of tube on the back of it just slightly so that it fits in the recess on there. But other than that, we're in pretty good shape. Moving on again, quite quickly at the minute because we've got more than a few bits of 3D printed goodies to show you that we've been working on for the car. I say we, it's mostly been Adrian, if I'm honest. So next up, we've got a, a gear shifter enclosure. So this is in two pieces, mostly because our printer is not ridiculously enormous. This is a fairly normal size printer. So we've got a rear section, it's relatively simple. This just kind of fits on over there. This isn't the final one. We'll get to that in a second. And this is the kind of Mark 1 front piece. Now the front is relatively complex. We've got like an angle cut across the front here where the dashboard is retreating away on the driver's side. There's a pocket in the front right corner that we have to fit down into. And we've got to fit over the two bolt holes. We've got to fit around the shoulder. We've got to try and fit curve underneath the foam. There's a lot going on there. So we did quite a few rounds on the front. So the front part being relatively small compared to the rear really, really speeds up the iteration speed. We can get one of these out in, I think, like an hour and a half or two hours or something when we're testing, which is really, really nice. So this is the first front piece that we made, and it mostly worked apart from schoolboy error. We didn't knock out this front inside corner here where my fingertip is, which is where there's kind of radius on the shifter. So that was an interference fit and didn't work. We then, on version two, we tried to do too much at once. So we knocked that corner out. We put a radius in so that it would fit but also try to put a nice big undercut on the front edge of it where it would go underneath the foam. Unfortunately, it turns out the geometry didn't work on that, so we had to bend that back to do our test fitting. But apart from that, that worked. We then did some experiments with rounding the shoulders over so that we've got a slightly nicer profile over the thing. This is a much shorter test piece, again, just to get the print time down so that we can bash through them a bit quicker. And this one fit relatively nicely over the front, and that's, the, that's what let us get the angle and everything really, really dialed in. And then moving on to a ground up redesign. So at this point, we changed how we were actually going to put the whole thing together. Obviously, you've already seen that it's two pieces and we were then going to build up the center section on top. We've kind of tweaked around how we make the various different parts mesh together so that they print faster, so that we don't need to worry so much about the support material and things like that. So this is where we were at last night. And then finally, we printed this one off this morning. This is the, this is the latest version of the front half. And if I drop this down over here now, you should see it's a relatively nice fit. We do need to take this front edge back just a little bit further. It's um, pressing into the foam a little bit too hard on the driver side. It's kind of skewing the whole thing around. And if I put our first rear section on the back here, 
I, I know you can't see it from there, but on this side, where the two halves are supposed to meet, there's actually a bit of a gap between them. So we can tell everything's not quite lined up. But we've got a new design going in for that today. So hopefully we'll have that printed off before tomorrow and then we can get this together and obviously update the rear half to match that like nice rolled over shoulder. And at that point, this will be pretty much together. and We can start building up from there. We did think briefly about doing this whole thing in one gigantic piece, but the amount of geometry that's going on here, we've got uh, bolt holes down here that we've got to try and fit the sort of upper half onto to hold the whole thing down or, you know, using these clips here to hold it in place. We've got the undercut at the front. We've got the bolt holes that we're fitting over here. We've got the turret. We've got the actual shifter itself. There's just too much going on for us to want to do it in one piece. It's almost definitely doable. We're just not at that level. So we're doing it in three pieces, making it nice and easy for ourselves, which also means we can iterate quite quickly. And maybe once we've figured out all the three pieces, maybe then we you know, merge them all into one model and print it all in one go. But that's a, that's a future decision. And if you thought that was a lot of steps to get the part right, this is the most iterative part of the whole car so far. Now, in my hand, I've got four steps of the process. There are two more in front of me. And I'm not sure if you remember, but a good few episodes back, we made three failed attempts to make it in metal. So we're on something like nine attempts to get the dimensions right on this one. We did a couple of these test pieces in yellow just to try and validate the dimensions. That was wrong. That one was wrong. This one was wrong. And this is the point where we realized that the whole panel wasn't going to print in one piece. So we started printing it in two pieces. And these were wrong. <laughs> but then by this point, we had actually figured out the, uh, the dimensions it all had to be pretty much. So we then moved on to like a skeletonized kind of test frame. So this one was a dimensional test fit for the, I think this is the side mirror control panel. And that fits in there relatively cleanly. So we've got the dimensions mostly right by this point. So with that validated and with the switch unit having fit fairly well in there, we moved on to a slightly bigger test piece. And this one had the receiver in for the big headlight rotary switch, which again, fit pretty well. That drops in there. I think this one actually only fits because it's a skeleton and it can kind of twist around a little bit. But after all that effort, we do finally have a working, ready-to-go switch panel. So we've got our light switch rotary already in here. The geometry on that was quite tricky, hence so many iterations, but that's in and working. We've got our side mirror control. This is actually the old broken one, but for the, for the purpose of test fitting, like obviously it's fine. And we've got a couple of blanking plates here with generic like 19 mil switch holes. One switch that we're gonna put in that we've already got here is our fan override switch. So this is gonna be, as well as the automatic fan control that's coming off the ECU and everything, we're going to be able to manually override it and lock the fan on. So say we've just done a lap on the Nürburgring, we're on cool down, we can just lock it on and cruise around a bit and get that cooled off again. And the nice thing is this one, albeit with a tiny amount of finagling, does fit in really quite nicely to the panel there. So you've got to shave off the top left corner here, it doesn't quite fit around the radius, but like we're almost perfect on that one. And with that in place, we can move on to the final piece that we thought would be really, really simple and that until about two minutes ago, I thought was finished. I've since discovered when we try to install this, it doesn't actually fit with the top panel installed because both this and that have this same overlap here where it's meant to come around the metal frames. So obviously, these are trying to interfere with each other on this lip. So we're going to do another run on this piece and get that done. Even getting to this point has required more than a few iterations. I've got four pieces in front of me. Now, granted, each piece is one half of a test run, but nonetheless, this counts, I think, three or four complete attempts to make this work. But apart from the fact it doesn't fit with the other panel, this is actually perfect. It's printed in two pieces, glued together and clipped together down the back to hold it all in place. And we've got a little experimental kind of retainer clip here that clips around the 10 mil frame. This actually works really well. When I test fit it earlier, it clips and holds the thing in really nicely. And to pop it off, you can just reach around from the outside and just kind of press it off from the inside with your fingertips. So that works really, really nicely. Unfortunately, I can't show you, so you're going to have to take my word for it. Now, while we've got some things printing inside, we're going to work on some more cosmetic stuff. And you might well be asking, why on earth are you working on cosmetic stuff when the car is on jack stands, has no wheels, and there's suspension that needs to be rebuilt? Well, while we're working on the interior and getting all of those dimensions for the printed parts right, we need to work out what we're going to do with our dashboard pieces, because these all need to be safe. That is, they need to be padded, and they need to be not sharp. Now, there was a sharp edge around the very edge here. We've trimmed that back just about an eighth of an inch. So hopefully this foam will now wrap around over the top when we put on 
our cloth. So this is just some leatherette. It is actually a dining room table kind of cover. So it's quite thick, it's quite hard wearing, and it has a little bit of stretch to it. So I'm hopeful that this is gonna wrap around the shape that we need, and it's gonna stay in place with some contact adhesive. So we'll get this on, and this can be drying and curing whilst we do a few other bits on the car and the prints continue to finish off. Now I'm not too bothered about this actually being completely covered. I just want to get the main section down, then we can start wrapping it over the top. I also want to put something protective down on the top of here so that the leather actually doesn't get torn up by this very old tatty bench. So we just need to give this a few minutes to go off and we can start laying this over. And I think I'll probably get Chris to give me a hand with that because putting this much material down, even approximately square over this, is no mean feat. Well, it's about an hour later and we have both pieces of our dash nicely covered. We've got the cutout for the dash vent in as well. That's all folded around, that's just drying and that is going to fit as nicely as we care about. This piece does also have a couple of little lumps and bumps where I replaced some of those bits of foam where it had torn through, where the tape attached to it. I just trimmed them out, put some new bits in and we just went straight over the top and that worked nicely. We've also managed to mold in the, um, the little support for this side of the dash to go in this side and to go underneath the two pieces which fit on the far edges of the dash and go up the A pillars and that's what actually holds it down. And that's the last thing we need to do before these go in because at the moment we have these big steel edges that will just slice through this and ruin the whole thing. So we either need to put a little bit of rubber U-channel on them or just glue a little bit of this um, leatherette to it and that should be enough. So we'll go and do that now and then get these back in and you can see what it looks like. Well, we said we were going to print this later today, and as it turned out, that became later this week. So I'm now back after having been away for a bit, and Aid, while I've been gone, has designed and printed this one-piece vent adapter and Bowden holder. So this does the same job as the two vent adapters used to, so we take our air hoses, go on the back there, and converts into these BMW E46 vents, but also he's put a slot in the middle that actually holds the, uh, the end of the Bowden, so that when I run the, uh, run the dial through here, it does actually operate the valve on the, well, it would if I was holding everything together properly, uh, but it does actually now operate the valve on the uh, on the heater box. So that's really, really good. The the actual valve operation is still a bit iffy because we haven't got the right bolt in there. There's a lot of slop and that takes up um, a lot of the travel on the adjuster here. But in principle, everything does actually work. So I can install this into the dash now. Well, the vents are back in and everything works really nice. They actually hold in place a lot better now as well, thanks to this foam that we've put across the top to keep the IVA man happy. Previously, it sort of flapped around a bit, but now it's nice and solid. We've also checked the Bowden works. That's really, really nice. It rolls through. It does take a little bit of effort and it doesn't perfectly move the valve at the minute because we've got the wrong size of screw on there, but it does work. We've kind of proven the concept. I do have to hold the uh, rear face on at the minute, which isn't perfect. Obviously, one day we'll punch some holes through, rivet that on so that when the Bowden pushes out that way, it doesn't just pop this adapter off. But we'll do that on final assembly another day. The next thing that kept us really busy this week was making yet more versions of the various different pieces of our gear sticks around. So we've now got a version, I don't know, probably nine or so of this. We're keyed into the top half, actually slots into the bottom half and stays in place, which makes assembly a lot nicer. It fits around really quite nice. And we've also managed to mostly contour it to fit around the, uh, the actual dashboard pretty well. Still a little bit more to do here, but we're in pretty good shape now. And finally, we've got two of the final uh, of the final pieces to go on here so we've got a little square panel that goes on just next to the steering wheel there is a hole in the middle here for track day use only for a special extra control that we can't have on the road i don't want to uh, bias your judgment on what that may be so guesses in the comments it does actually pop in it's just a little bit of a pig and we've got one here that's a little bit easier, and this is our hazard switch and fan control that I showed you earlier. The difference is it's now complete, and it's also kind of tricky to get the right installation. Here we go. So yeah, that's now installed, so we can control our fan, get our hazards, 
and that's all looking pretty solid. It leaves just the big double din cavity there that we need to figure out something to do with. So we've got a cage, we just need to put some kind of fascia on it, and this awkward little panel here that we're not really sure how to model, because unlike everything else here, which is just rectangles that we're kind of putting things in, this one's like kicked out at the corner, so we're not sure how to deal with that. We'll have to take a bunch of measurements and see if we can figure out a way to make all the planes meet up in FreeCAD. So uh, that's a fun challenge for another day. And finally, with all that together, we're going to throw the top panel on and see how everything looks. So, Aid's going to pass me this. He's going to get that corner in first because that kind of locates the whole thing. And then once that's mostly in, I look underneath at all these little metal clips that run along here. And I try to line them up with this rib. Now, a few of them are broken and snapped and bent out of shape. So, we're going to have to replace all of these. But, that's us pretty much in. I do think we need to do a little bit more work with figuring out how to hold it down because I think where we once had it kind of popped into the side of this piece, it doesn't really engage as well anymore with all the foam there now. So we've probably got to rethink this a touch. But mostly, this is pretty solid. With all that stuff in there, the interior is actually starting to look pretty good. It's still not on the level we'd expect from a production car, but, you know, look at the rest of it. I guess apart from all the bits that we have robbed from production cars. But by and large, it's all looking pretty solid. We've printed our way out of a lot of problems, and there are still some problems that we haven't finished printing our way out of. Amusingly, one of the first things we tried 3D printing a solution for was our braking clutch switches here. That is still ongoing after, I think now, probably a year and a half or two years of attempting new pieces for this. Unfortunately, it's such a dick to get down into where these things are mounted that the number of times where we get in there to take measurements and test fit is really quite thin on the ground. But we want to get the floor back on and get the uh, seats and everything in, which means we really have to finish these sooner rather than later. We've also got some bits we want to throw down the center tunnel, things like a handbrake lever cover and a few other bits around there. We've got to print covers to protect our tail lights from the elements where the electrical connectors all run in. We've still got to do mounting systems for our air intake, which we have prototyped and done new designs for and everything, but that's even more 3D printing. But Honestly, probably not the best looking parts and not really engaging sort of material to talk you through, but we will show you it all once it's on later. And if you want to keep up with all of that as it happens, remember to subscribe to the channel down below, like the video if you liked it, and drop some comments down below. We do try to answer all of them, although I'll be honest, I do kind of forget for months at a time, so leave a comment and I'll probably get back to you in, I don't know, autumn thereabouts. And if you want to support us in our insanity, you can also jump on shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy hats, hoodies, mugs, all sorts of bits and pieces that we've got available for you. We are still working on getting those keychains out in, uh, in decent bulk, so hopefully you can start ordering those soon. If they're not already listed, it may well be this episode comes out after they've gone on, but however that works out. And you can also jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us there from as little as a dollar a month. And I want to say a particular thank you to all of our patrons because fairly soon we're going to be ordering some Lambda sensors for this. There's a four wire and a six wire one that we've got to buy. I don't know which one, but one of them's about a hundred quid, which is a bit rich, I think. So we really appreciate all the support you give us because that lets us buy parts like that when we need them. Well, that's everything for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.